The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. You're listening to CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310. And we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phones. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Are you ready, Steve? Uh-huh. Andy? Yeah! Bert? Well, all right, fellas. Let's go! You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Wednesday, 26th day of September. 2018. Hope you're having a great Wednesday, whoever you are, wherever you are. They call it hump day because you're officially over the hump uh, if you look at the week, depending upon your time zone. Some of us still have a few hours to go. But hey, how about that fit? Hang on. Take two. How about that Fed? All right. <clears throat> we got the Fed coming this afternoon. And is it going to relieve some pressure? Take a look. Well, let's go to a different chart. Let's mess up a different chart. Uh, where we go? 
you know what this demonstrates it pretty good I'll use the Dow I posted this last night right at the London Open uh, right before <clears throat> and it was yesterday afternoon hey we this is the Dow we had some movement we went from uh, 26670 down to 26520 and then the markets closed we had a bullish cross now when I posted this I might still have ah, that's what I posted last night the bullish cross and we, we talked about this a bit we talk about this every day bullish cross we need to see price pull away price pull back all of that okay we didn't get it on the first one and so as this was crossing I'm like oh was this a head fake you see this here was was not a head fake I mean you got a bearish cross and that baby meant business here I had a feeling not so much Let's move this out of the way all right so we get head fake that way then we get head fake this way I put some commentary in on this one and I just said we've got candles going in one direction and the backbone of our indicator set headed the other way uh, that won't work then we almost head faked long again and we almost head faked short again and where are we well if you look at the horizontal line on my cursor which is a straight line pretty much mm. see when this is happening we have trades and when this is happening we have trades and when this is happening you think uh, we're asleep at the wheel hey man I haven't had an alert lately well I'm gonna go to a little bigger time frame here in a minute and I'll show you that this whole week has just been basically tied up in a knot yeah so but we're still looking turn over rocks looking for opportunity and finding some opportunities just not in the areas that we typically find them now the s p i don't have the indicators loaded on there but as you can see it's pretty much the same song and dance this roll back real slow like it's the sunday night gap lower open i know we'll do it this way all right now we did manage to close that gap uh, finally yesterday so we're gonna go from here to here over here define our playing field for the week so far on the s &P. okay now <clears throat> what we got on the on the downside we got 2917 basically 2918 2918 up to 2934 okay So we have a 16 point range on the week and when you have a 16 point range on the day that's not bad uh, up until a two up until a couple years ago the average true range the average daily true range on the s p 500 e mini futures going back many 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 years was 20 points give or take and then we got into that period of incredible volatility and I'm not ready to say that that's over. I'm just saying we're taking a breather into the Fed and whatever the, you know, we, we look at the Fed the same way we look at a chart and look at our trading. What are, what, what are the options? What, what can they do? That's why I asked John yesterday. Do you think it's any kind of surprise they bring to the table? I think the world expects them to raise interest rates by quarter point. Okay if that's what they do if they're true to form how do the markets react 
and they say, well, well, that's already baked in the cake. It's built in, okay? I don't disagree. I'm just hoping that it takes the pressure off so that buyers are confident to buy, sellers are willing to sell. Here, let me, let me talk to you like this, E-S-Z-A. We're gonna go daily. <clears throat> Okay, now see the difference between bit on a no, I'm still on 30. I'm sorry. There we go. All right, you see the difference here. Look at that. We deep pullback, a leg, and a retracement, and a leg on a daily chart. And now we've had two gap lower opens two Sundays in a row. Uh, I'm on four hour. Take a look at this four hour though, because the daily is going to look different. Mm. Straighten that thing right out. All right, so here's our most recent Sunday camp floor open. And I thought we had one. Okay, so if that's Sunday, well, today's Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. There's Sunday night, there's the gap. Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Sunday. I thought there was a gap, okay. Pardon me, uh, there wasn't. But Sunday nights is about the only time we do get them. So now, looking at the daily chart, we see, we still have no reason to expect anything other than higher prices. Right, we're setting up here for potentially bullish divergence. Blue lines up here, green lines down here. We either take off from here with the Fed, or we get a little pullback action. Twenty-nine sixty, perhaps. I'm not going to put all the new zones up on the uh, chart, but just give you a, a heads up. The highest weekly trading zone we have this week for the S&P is 2975 slash 2976. So we'll come back and talk about this a little more. Now I'm going to, I'm going to roll the tape backwards. Yeah. You know how to do. There's a daily four hour. On the four-hour chart, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We have 17 candles. That of the 17 I just counted, only one is not touching the BBC. I know that it's just real obvious, even to those who are new, that this down move and this up move and this deeper retracement and this continued up move look nothing like this. When you see this, there's absolutely nothing you can do. Now, when you see this, you can make money, you can lose money, when you see this, pretty much you're just gonna, uh, you're gonna feed the kitty. And the question is, do you wanna do that? Now, that again is another benefit of, of the CFRN Passport or the L2 service in that if there's nothing coming through the pipeline, there's a reason, okay? And, and sometimes when we're just getting started and we're learning, maybe we don't, know all the reasons or maybe it's Wednesday and it's 10 a.m. and we're in front of our computer and because we've decided that we're going to be a trader we should be trading right somebody walks in the office and say hey what are you doing uh, 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 I'm trading no you aren't I start you were just sitting there staring out the window 
there's nothing to trade. Oh, come on. 8,000 stocks, how many futures, there's options. Need I go on? Nah, well, I don't do all of those. I just do, for the moment, futures. I keep peeping over the fence <clears throat> at the uh, stocks. We look at stocks every day with John. And I think I mentioned that we have a full-fledged charting platform coming to our website. Mm -hmm. The final touches are getting the simulator set up for you. And then the, the most delicate of exercises is recoding the indicators completely so that they work flawlessly <clears throat> on the new platform. Uh, that's coming to you and that will be part of the CFRM passport. In other words, take care of your education, start tr training in SAM, real-time data. As you are approaching your constant, consistent profitability, then you take care of funding your account, getting everything ready so that when it's time, it's all taken care of. But the good news is, is you don't have to deal with it straight away. I'll encourage you to start preparing for it and get ready for it because I want to, that's where I want to see you within a couple weeks, but you got to gotta get those 10 days together. So anyway, I'm way ahead of myself. Thanks for joining us today. If you're returning, welcome back. If you're here for the first time, a special welcome to you. So glad to have you with us. Thanks for stopping by. Come back tomorrow as well. Tomorrow, Dr. Tom be with us. We'll talk more about investment grade gold and i got some questions for him bring your questions too if you have not received your starter pack go to cfrn gold one word cfrngold.com go there get your starter pack read up and then be ready to ask questions about the 10 10 10 plan tomorrow okay all right if you can't see the chart I've been talking about, go to our homepage at cfrn.net. On the right-hand side, click the big microphone, follow the instructions. You'll be registered within 30 seconds, and you'll be good through the end of the month. Now, here's the idea. If you register at the first of the month, you're good for the whole month. You trade 30 seconds for 30 days, and that's a good deal. Also, you only have to do this once. During a live show, go to youtube.com slash CFRN slash live bookmark that page if the go to ever goes down you will have one click access to the show because we dual stream over at YouTube okay all right now we talked a little bit yesterday about Africa and crypto and entrepreneurs but we've also talked a lot in the past about the corruption that exist in Africa. I've told my tales of woe, one of which was we brought a container over there filled with medical supplies and a dental chair and a Jeep. And by the, it took a year to get that container unsealed. We paid off every government official in the land. And when, when it was all said and done, the bribes cost more than the materials inside of the container. So, that was a wash at best. At best, I think we actually lost money on the deal, but what are you going to do? Foreign land. Now, I bring up corruption because it's kind of a big deal there. But you see, they haven't been doing it all on their own. European banks have allegedly been complicit as corrupt African leaders pilfer the wealth of their economies up into the billions of dollars police in Angola. You haven't heard that in a while, Angola. We used to hear it was in the news all the time, but now not. Uh, police in Angola on Monday arrested the son of former president, Jose Eduardo dos Santos, over a corruption case involving the alleged illegal transfer of $500 million of public funds to a British bank. Now this was reported initially by Bloomberg. Let me just say, 500 million is a lot of money in Angola. And the fact that these are public funds 
Why are they being sent to a British bank? Well, that could be all right. Investment purposes. The government officials in charge of that money, the ones who are able to pilfer it, are also the ones in charge of stewarding it. Jose Filomino dos Santos was placed in preventive detention, according to Angolan authorities. He initially tried to wire the funds to the London branch of Swiss bank Credit Suisse using forged documents, but British authorities blocked the transfer, suspecting foul play. The transfer later sailed through. Now, I've sent many a wire to Africa. In fact, uh, I don't know how he got 500 million to sail through. I used to have trouble getting 5,000 to sail through. Uh, but again, he is a corrupt government official and they have a lot of power. And so we have to respect that, of course. <clears throat> the transfer later sailed through, this time allegedly via an HSBC holdings account in the United Kingdom. The evidence gathered resulted in sufficient indications that the defendants have been involved in practices of various crimes, including criminal associations, receipt of undue advantage, corruption, participation in unlawful business, money laundering, embezzlement, and fraud, among others. Angola's finance ministry says Dos Santos, who was head of the country's $5 billion wealth fund, disguised the transfer as a project aimed at attracting investment in Angola with the help of a fake guarantee from a bank in Europe. Appointed by his father to head the wealth fund in 2013, Dos Santos was sacked earlier this year after he was charged with misappropriating public funds to the tune of $500 million from the National Bank of Angola. He promised to comply with investigations at the time. His arrest, together with an Angolan Swiss businessman, is part of President, the new president's plans to rid Africa's number two oil producer of corruption. Angola is ranked by the Transparency International among the world's top 20 most corrupt countries. The former transport minister has also been arrested over allegations of embezzlement the latest development comes at a time when European banks have faced criticism for allegedly aiding corrupt African leaders siphon billions, that's B as in billions of dollars from the impoverished continent. According to the African Capacity Building Foundation, the continent loses up to $50 billion in illicit financial flows each year. And I would like to know what the, uh, <clears throat> what the budget is, the taxpayer budget of the African Capacity Building Foundation. Yeah, somebody created a nice job for themselves or their son or their double first cousin. Nigerian President Muhammad Buhari last week demanded that HSBC Bank return up to 100 million. Wait a minute, you took 500 million, but I'm gonna let you off the hook for 100? They want the bank to return up to 100 million of the 500 million. It allegedly helped former dictator launder from the Nigerian economy. In 2006, Switzerland handed back 500 million of the Abacha loot to Nigeria, the first time any bank in Europe had returned stolen money to a country in Africa. Liberia has indicated that it is investigating its former central bank governor, Milton Weeks, and Charles Sirleaf, a son of the former president, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, over 104 million that vanished from state coffers. Now, if this money was turning up missing in America, or London, or the Cayman Islands, understandable. If you've not been to Africa, you don't truly understand the definition of poor. You can go to Mexico, you can drive through the Appalachian Trail, I mean, there's places in and near America that uh, suffer from impoverished conditions, even in some inner cities, but you you ain't seen nothing yet. I I'm telling you, 104 million. 
HSBC Holdings is one of the largest banking and financial services organizations in the world. Their international network comprises 7,500 offices in over 80 countries and territories in Europe, the Asia Pacific region, the Americas, the Middle East, and Africa. But the firm has been forced to pay billions of dollars in fines for money laundering and other financial crimes. Sounds to me like this is Jamie Dimon's African counterpart, his African doppelganger. He just, don't get me started. And the US HSBC paid $1.9 billion for helping to facilitate the laundering of Mexican drug money and several men were paid in Hong Kong for systemic deficiencies. Now, I said all that to say this, cryptocurrency is seen as key to helping African countries fight corruption and illicit transfers. A report published on the Brookings Institution website reveals that cryptocurrency and blockchain could help prevent fraud and corruption, reduce the cost of enforcement thanks to easily accessible information and faster cross checks, and help survive the implementation and monitor efficiency and effectiveness of spending, increasing development impact. So let's get with it. I mean, think, if, okay, 500 million comes up missing and then there's another 105. If that money trickled down to the people. Now, this isn't, you know, this isn't anything new. Uh, this is just the the higher ups getting caught with their hand in the cookie jar. I mean, all the local officials had both hands in our container until we paid them off. But these guys are in a position to, one guy gets caught. I mean, this has been going on for over a hundred years and you know they finally actually catch somebody. That's a sad tale, you know? Hey, you guys, I didn't want to worry you, but Michael was away, but now he's back. Let me give you the numbers and we'll jump over to him and get a recap. Uh, here in the U.S., cash markets currently ahead of the Fed, Dow up 61 points, NASDAQ up 27, S&P up 7.5, and, and the Russell 2000 down 6. In the commodity basket, crude oil lost 45 cents. So far, trading 71.84 last. Gold down six and a half dollars ahead of the Fed, not making sense. Uh, trading 1198.60. In the Asian markets, the Nikkei rose 93 points by the close. Shanghai up 25. Now for the Shanghai, that's almost 1%. Hang Seng, a green day for the Hang Seng. Go Hang. Hang time. Uh, 317 points. That's over 1%. And in the European markets, FTSE added 4, DAX added 11, and the CAC up 33. It is a green day in Asia, a green day in the United Kingdom, Europe, and in America. Mixed because of the Russell. So we'll take a, a closer look at the Russell. Now, the Russell is 2,000 small cap companies. They're closer to the heartbeat of America than some of the large cap companies might be. I've always judged the economy by the man in the street. If he's got a job and he's got a little walking around money, the economy's probably pretty good. You know, it's just the average guy, whoever he might be, but that's how I've looked at it. Uh, in other big news, Chicago Med, Chicago Fire, and Chicago PD all return to network programming tonight. We never got into the into the Med, the Chicago Med. We watched it a little bit, but I don't know. I mean, it's just not Marcus Welby. But that Chicago Fire, yeah, good show. And uh, Chicago PD probably doesn't get much better. Now, Shades of Blue, that was incredible with Ray, uh, 
what's his name, the guy, the guy from Goodfellas, Ray Liotta. They cut that show short after two seasons, but wow, that'll be in syndication as long as MASH. <clears throat> Michael, if you're ready, I'm ready. I am here. I am here and ready. Watch any of those shows, Chicago Fire, Chicago PD? Um, no. Okay, then I do on. watch MASH occasionally, though. Okay. okay. Now, yeah, you know, I haven't watched an episode of MASH in a really long time, but it, you, you know you've reached the saturation point when you sit there and you can deliver the punchline to every joke. I mean, you, you, you couldn't do a cold reading of an episode, but you've watched MASH so many times over the years that if you're in front of it, as Hawkeye throws out whatever, you come back with a zinger. And... Uh, that becomes a game in and of itself. Plus, you get to watch the TV show. It does. I, and Jade's dad binge watches it, so I, you know, when when I'm at their house, I end up watching it. <laughs> Don, okay, Don. Thank you very much for that link. I will have a look at that. Uh, Don sent me a link. It says it's a Netflix documentary reexamines HSBCS 881 million dollar money laundering scandal. In fact, let me put this in the uh, chat box for everyone. It says a little bit about what we were just talking about. This is the bank that has been found complicit in helping uh, the Angolan leader uh, steal everybody's money. That's what it comes down to. Don says some MX military honcho had a billion dollars. Hmm. Yeah, he didn't inherit that. I'm thinking. All right, I sent everybody the link. Thank you for that, Don. I appreciate it. All right, Michael, I'll pull the chart okay. up. So, I don't know. You've already got the charts, right? I do have the charts. Yeah. When we come back, I'll sh I'll explain that rectangle on the screen. You probably already know what it is. A whole lot of nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. That one that you drew on there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We've got I, a I 16, like 16 or I think 18, call it 18. We've got an 18 point range on the week. On the week. No, it was 16. 16 point range on the week. Yeah, I know. It's tough. Yeah, it is. Been, I mean, because. It's been rough this week doing anything. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, buddy. I'm going to hit all button. Right. It's all yours. Okay. Here we go. Let me uh, bring. This up, this over, and we'll get started. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday, the twenty-sixth day of September, two thousand eighteen. Um, let's start out with this. Um, if you go to the homepage at CFRN.net, then right over here to take our free trial, it says five-day free trial. Apply.CFRN.net. If you click on that, or if you scroll down, you look right here. It says free five-day trial. You can click on that. Or user indicators, you can click on that. Any one of them is eventually going to bring you to this page, where on this page, all we ask for is your email, your first name, how you found us, hit the submit button. Once you hit that submit button, you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on that confirmation link. Okay, we don't know you took the trial until you click that link. Today, um, today we had a red day. Guys, we were minus two ticks. Now, we've had red days this month, but they're really small ones. And the reason they're really small, is because the market just isn't moving around a whole bunch. Um, and so we ended up with minus two ticks on crude. Only three trades. Only three trades today. Now, how unusual is that that we only have three trades? First time this month. I don't know how far back do we have to go to find a day where we only had three. Back here, a month and a half ago. We were green on that day. But today, we were red. Um, so anyway, on the month, we're at 1,541 bucks. That's over 17 days. And on the year, now, we are at 24,942. That's over 177 days. So for that 177 days, we're averaging $140 per contract per day. That is one contract, two hours per day. Okay, now let's see what we didn't do today. Um, in the gold, we had one break-even trade right there. We had all this pre-market activity. And I said that when we started up, I said, you know, when we have a pre-market like this, we're likely to just get chopped the rest of the day. And that's all we had, chop. Um, on the Euro, this was our pre-market and even the pre-market, if you got short way up here, when you had a trade set up and you stayed in it all the way down, great. 
Otherwise, the slingshot was not letting you get back in. During the morning session, more of the same. There was nothing to do in there. Nothing that you could do. Um, crude oil. Crude. Let's see. We stopped out on crude right here. Our first trade of the day. We stopped out on crude. This was coming out of the chop. It put in a lower swing, came back up. We thought we were going to get it right there. And no, we only got three ticks. Not enough to move the stop to break even. Now, somewhere in here, we picked up six ticks. I highlighted this area, but I'm not sure that that's the right place. But I do know that we picked up six ticks in there. We missed this trade right here, and this would have been a day maker right there. That was the one trade that we missed. Um, and since then, nothing. Nothing. The ES, more of the same. Started out in here, didn't give any trade setups, went up to the zone, dropped down, didn't give a trade setup, pulled back up to the zone. Nothing. Nothing. You know, this FOMC this afternoon is a big deal. And, you know, it's at 2 and at 2.30. So it's a really big deal. Uh, you guys want to make sure you're not in the market when that stuff comes out. Okay, because I think everybody's holding off and just waiting for that. Um, today, as I said, was a red day. Let me highlight the red color. There we go. Okay, we were down 20 bucks today. So um, that's minus two ticks on crude over three trades. We had one stop out, one plus six, and one break even today. Um, on the month now, we're at 1541. That's over 17 days. And on the year, we're at 24,942. That's over 177 days. Okay, that's averaging $140 a day. That's one contract, two hours per day. If you have not taken our free trial, go to the homepage here at CFRN.net. Right over here where it says five day free trial, apply to CFRN.net, click on that, and you'll be sent to this page. Where all we ask for is your email, your first name, and how you found us. Click the submit button. Once you hit that submit button, you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link. Okay, if you don't click the confirmation link, then you don't get the free trial. So make sure you go and do that. Okay, okay, and with that, we'll minimize this and send it back out to fabulous Phoenix, Arizona. Studio A overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Dwayne, if you are ready. I know that was kind of quick, but you may still be ready. Sam, I just looked at the audience and I saw you out there. Um, did you ring my bell? I did ring your bell. Ding. Ding dong. Ding dong 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 dong. That's my doorbell. Somebody said there was a way to change that, but I don't know. Get a different doorbell. That's <laughs> move. <laughs> now, have you have you do you know anybody that has one of those ring uh, doorbells? No. It's the kind where you're on a plane flying somewhere and, uh, and your phone goes ding ding and you look and there's some strange sketchy looking character at your front door. No, oh, no. No, I don't know anybody like that. He's pretending to deliver a package when he is actually taking packages. Oh, yeah. And My sister's had that done. You can, you know, just key up your phone there and say, hey, you sketchy guy, put it down. Now. now, and then you play a little sound file your on your number. phone, like a mad Doberman pincher, <laughs> you know, and he just leaves because <clears throat> it's easier. It's just easier. Yeah. yeah, I don't have one, but the people that I know who do, I mean, it seems like an awesome, the, the way, the brochure is, is lovely, the product itself, the one guy I know that really has one and has tried to make it work. He's a very tech savvy guy. He said he once caught the side, uh, a distant fuzzy side view of the Chinese food delivery man's face. Huh. That's and that's all. Best he's, he has a podcast. And so people send him all these different products to review. And uh, I was surprised. Uh, he gave it such a poor review, but he said he still likes it. <laughs> I guess they have other things they could send him. Now, up on this uh, screen, 
available for viewing. Uh, this I went back to Sunday night, and I caught the low of the week there, the high of the week there, and fast math, 2918 to 2934. Yep, 16 points on the week. That's that's pretty tight range for a so week. So we're now we're in, and and look over the last. Uh, few hours in fact this this shows it pretty good this is a four hour chart mm -hmm. and I counted back 17 candles and of the 17 four hour candles only one is not touching physically touching the BBC Wow you know how we like to get a leg and a retracement and physically yeah, touch yeah. the BBC and an up close yeah, well the BBC yeah. is flat so yeah, I mean I... that's what I was telling I was, I was trying to show them maybe you can add a few words here when this looks like that you don't want nothing there there is no money to be made here you can no, lose a no. ton you could lose a fortune here but there's no money to be made now right I don't take that too literally because you could go in and, and take out some you know a couple points here a couple points there I'm just saying the abundance that we see when markets are more like this and even like you know this oh there's just lots of money to be made there but yeah, yeah I mean, and it was all the way back to candles. Sunday night it's been like that since Sunday night I'm mad Michael I want to call somebody that's, that's yep I would I would call to see me How call to see me suppose run so, a training business with markets like this if you weren't charging so much in fees people would be trading <laughs> they'd be trading oh they'd be trading all over the place hey i uh i shared with the audience that uh i want to tell you first but that just didn't work out uh, we have a um a full-fledged charting platform mm -hmm. coming to the site uh yeah, you mentioned it yesterday yeah yeah I'm just trying to talk about that and I, the 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 stickler I'm trying to get the simulator on the site and we have access to the simulator but I'm trying to get it on site and so I'm just still working on it but maybe we can go live in the next uh, few days next week and I explain to them that if things go as planned it will be built into the passport program and that will give us a well-rounded ecosystem that you, you never have to go outside of the ecosystem really for anything until you're ready to open your live account okay and start trading and by then you'll have hung around us long enough that I'm pretty confident you'll make the right decision wink wink if you know what I mean for us there just there is no other broker there's one his name's Bert I don't know what we're gonna do when he retires uh, I guess we'll retire with him. We just got a double. Bert's never going to retire. <laughs> he dreams of the day that he can trade from home in his boxer shorts. He told me that. So, <laughs> uh, I labeled us yesterday. Uh, how did that go? Um, I got it here on the Telegram. Telegram. You know we have a lot of fun on the Telegram. Yes, we do. Baby's a money maker too. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. How you like the passport? You said you said that you is nice. Two. You said you wanted two. That is nice. That's a transparent background, by the way. The Telegram doesn't do transparent. Um. Uh, well, perhaps. I didn't put it. I thought I forwarded it to every channel. Oh, I'm upset now. Mm. Looks like I didn't send it to any. I thought everybody got it. Well, somebody sent me a thing that, dude, that is so funny. Uh, oh, I think he deleted it. Hey, Bert, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend. It's gone, Michael. It's gone. It's all gone. Lord have mercy. Anyway, uh, let's see. The Three Stooges. Let's see. Uh, Bert was Sergeant Carter. I was Fabio. And uh, you were Eddie's father. Eddie's father. Let me tell you about my best friend. 
it is a warm it boy. I have no prize for the person that can come up with those lyrics first. <clears throat> hey, I went and got coffee while you were doing your your stick. Mm-hmm. And now I can't find it. Did you case of the you must, say, the case you of must have put it down somewhere. Coffee cup. Yeah, just give me two seconds, I'll find it. Okay. You go find it. I'll watch the market stagnate. Gold looks like it's trying to get a little bit higher here, but, well, you know, trying and actually doing are two different things. And... He's my one boy, cuddly toy, my up, my down, my pride and my joy. Yeah, he's my best friend. You never watched Eddie's father? I don't think so. Yeah, you're a little bit younger. I'm a man of a certain age. So, but anyway, it was a, if you ever syndication on cable. Oh, here we go. And the winner of nothing is Gary. Good job, Gary. Written by Harry Nielsen. Why do I know that name? Harry Nielsen. Courtship of Eddie's father, lyrics. That was quick, Gary. People, let me tell you about my best friend. He's a warm-hearted person who loved me till the end. People, let me tell you about my best friend. He's a one-boy cuddly toy, my up, my down, my pride and joy. People, let me tell you about him. He's so much fun. Whether we're talking man to man, or whether we're talking son to son, because he's my best friend. So anyway, I was trying to give us all labels, and I still can't believe it's not butter. So I got the Fabio, and Bert, a uh, retired uh, Marine, or was a Marine, Sergeant Carter, and I found some clips from the original Gomer Pile, and it just fits so well. And, uh, and you were Eddie's father, who was a very nice guy. He never got remarried, though. I, I, you know, I, say. Oh, I, I got remarried. When's your big day? Second time. Second time. <laughs> I'm in a committed relationship. Are you just going to leave it at that? Well, Are you for another couple of years. <laughs> a couple of years. Okay. Well, you bought a ring, right? Yeah. A yep. promise ring. Huh? No, it's okay. actually an engagement ring. It's, I did. I bought her a promise ring years ago. And then I got her an engagement ring. So we are officially engaged. Have you seen this? Uh, hang on. Lots of I don't know. I remember him standing on a ladder. Oh, yeah. I put him on a ladder. Oh, you bet I did. Mm -hmm. And you can't hear the invigorating music that goes with this, but... It's invigorating. something um, it would actually you could, the, the good folk could see could hear the, uh, the sounds but uh, anyone that wants to really watch that and, and hear the lovely mu the music go to youtube.com slash CFRN youtube.com slash CFRN something I was going to tell you guys about because we've talked about it on the show and my brother-in-law, by the way, who was my inside guy at Amazon to tell me how ruthless they were, he quit, which is oh, really uncharacteristic of him, but not really. Uh, he's now 
he now has a job babysitting his granddaughter uh, because his daughter, who's a twin, she uh, has a job, I guess, that pays her enough money that she can afford to pay him to babysit. So he told Jeff Bezos to take that job and give it to somebody else. <clears throat> so here's the news coming out today on Amazon about their workers. Amazon has upped its pay for some warehouse workers. Now, we're talking about a situation where many of the people are living in poverty, according to the other employees, not just here, but in the United Kingdom. One lady, uh, they tried to buy her off for like three grand. She got hurt at work. And then, what was the other thing? Oh, a lady living homeless in a car. So, so the only, in response to all of that, the richest man on the planet who owns i guess the largest or second largest company on the planet or runs it <clears throat> the online retail giant has instituted pay raises for workers in some of the warehouses where the company fulfills orders i guess the ones where he's taking the most heat and so everyone tossed their cap up in the air and said yay and then the washington post reported that the raises ranged between two to four percent which you know because you don't really know what that is you assume it's yeah. pretty good what, what do you think two to four percent is um, probably thirty dollars a week before taxes okay I'm gonna break it down for you it's 25 to 55 cents more an hour on average there you go I nailed it I was right in the middle of that <laughs> some employees speaking anonymously said they were unhappy with that amount I'm unhappy with that amount, and I'm not anonymous, but I don't work there either yet. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough at all, one anonymous source said. The HR manager in the room was like, aren't you excited? Come on, clap. We started a slow clap with no emotions on our face. A 3% raise in four years, it feels like damage control. No, no, no. I've seen damage control. This is nothing. This is nothing it's it's an insult well, you take, i mean you take the top of that 50 cents an hour over 40 hours mm -hmm. it's 20 bucks right um that's and take taxes out of that you're you're down to like you know probably 18 bucks so so so, like so the good news is now you can take your kids to the movies once a month or if you only have one kid <laughs> well well, now you get it's twenty dollars a week. That's eighty bucks. So yeah, I, I, I went. To, I, I took my kid to the movie the other day, and I I don't remember what it costs, um, but I know that the the food and all that was fifty two dollars. Oh, we're smugglers. Yeah, we don't we 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 don't do that. Uh, my wife has extra large uh, pocketbooks just for. The, just for that in, occasion. Just for the carrying in of the snacks. Uh, I just I won't pay nine dollars for a hot dog. I'm sorry. It's filled with nitrates. It's not good for me. And you didn't grow it in your garden. <laughs> I didn't grow it in my garden. Right. So I'm, I'm just not gonna. It, it, it aggravates me. Now we did go, uh, Emily, for you know, some reading contest. She won tickets to. What do we go? Just go to. Uh, oh, uh, baseball game. The Phoenix Diamondbacks, Arizona Diamondbacks. We went, and, we went to see them, and I went to the concession stand just to remind myself why I don't go to the concession stand. I was just looking at the prices, and I came across some places that were, I come to find out later it was family night, which is why we got the free tickets, and I was seeing specially reduced prices on food items and beverages. I knew something didn't, it didn't feel right. I go. Hey Marie, this is America. Where's the nine dollar hot dogs? She goes, let me find out, and that's where she found out. So, um, in a statement of Business Insider, an Amazon spokeswoman criticized the post story as not demonstrative of the experiences of the majority of our workforce, and said it was clearly intended to sensationalize a regular employer practice. She said the company often adjusts employee pay and that the increase is part of an annual evaluation that happens every September. Oh, here comes the cover-up for that extra 20 bucks a week. This year's increase was 
comparable to raises given in previous years, she added. The majority of full-time fulfillment center employees receive annual wage increases which complement the standard tenured-based pay increases and performance-based bonuses. In the U.S., the average hourly wage for a full-time associate in our fulfillment centers, including cash, stock, and incentive bonuses, oh, whoa, 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 hang on. The average hourly wage, including cash, stock, and bonuses, is over $15 an hour before overtime. Now, according to Dave, nobody gets overtime. You can't even get 40 hours. Oh, and that's in addition to our full benefits package, which he said he did get on the very first day he went to work there part-time, he got the full benefits package. So that's a good thing. I mean, that's worth something. Said the man whose health insurance is $2,500 a month. So Amazon is now one of the country's largest employers and has a large network of fulfillment centers dedicated to shipping packages to customers. The company's warehouse pay has become an especially hot topic in the wake of high-profile attacks from Bernie Sanders, who frequently makes an example of Amazon using news stories that describe poor working conditions and low pay. Tweets from Sanders' account frequently portray Amazon as one of the biggest villains of capitalism, and they often mention the company's founder and CEO, Jeff Bezos, who is the richest man in the world. A recurring theme of Sanders tweets is Bezos' extreme wealth compared with what Amazon's lowest paid workers make. Sanders has also introduced the Stop Bezos bill, which would impose a 100% tax on government assistance received by workers at companies with more than 500 employees. Where do you stand on this, Michael? How much did you get paid hourly, the first hourly job? Do you ever have an hourly wage job? Oh yeah, yeah I had a bunch of them. How much? On my first one, though, I think I made two dollars and fifty cents an hour. A buck thirty-five. Buck thirty-five. That's how much older I am than you. <laughs> Congress or something. I don't know. Um, That's two fifty. And minimum wage at the time was two thirty-two. So I was oh, getting oh, spoiled so by eighteen people. cents. Right. You, you had connections. Okay, I get it. Uh, yeah, a dollar thirty-five. Now, granted, gas was fifty cents a gallon. A pack of Marlboros was fifty cents. Give or take. I, and I rode a moped. <laughs> you rode a moped? I got 50, 50 miles a gallon. I drove my mother's Volkswagen, which is kind of like a moped. I mean, that thing. Yeah, I, was, it was I was 15. Though. Yeah, it was just I a little bug. I used to call the, the, the bug, and uh, she would let me drive it to work. I started working when I was 14, 40 hours a week, plus school. So I didn't have time to get in a lot of trouble. Let's save that up later. <clears throat> okay. Uh, any signs of John? No. Not that John. No John. Any questions in the no, chat John. box? No, we covered those. No. Nope. I'm going to... Statements. Gonna, I'm going to jingle his phone because if he wants to come, he needs to come now. And... We got a couple emails from Tom. Dr. Tom. Oh, we did. I got to start yeah. checking it. And I should. He come. He's coming tomorrow or not coming tomorrow? I don't know. I. Oh, you didn't I just saw. I. I didn't read. It. I just saw oh, that they were from. You know, I need to talk to him this afternoon. Every Thursday, we both swear we're going to talk to each other because we have we have some plans in the wind, but we can't seem to settle down uh, long enough to actually do anything about it. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, he has he, he travels all over the world speaking to people about his favorite topic, which is investment grade gold. That's what he's done most of his adult life, and he's a like a bishop. He's a, a pastor's pastor, they call him, in that he uh, oversees pastors. Pastors need pastors too. A lot of people don't know that. That's why a lot of pastors <laughs> fail because no one <laughs> teaches. You coming like on? therapists need therapists. <laughs> Are you coming on? Are you coming on? Yeah, I'm coming on right now. All right. Sorry to wake you. Okay. Like therapists need therapists. You know? I'm sorry. Say that again. I said like therapists need therapists. Oh yeah. Oh that. Yeah. I, you know, my ex-wife was a therapist, and she had several therapists. Mm. And every every one of her friends that was a therapist that I knew had a therapist, at well, least one. How old were you when you had your first therapist? 
I never had one. I didn't either. Uh, but, <laughs> but I was. Well, no, I, I take that. Well, I, 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 probably, I, probably I don't, go into that I don't know. I was I was 24 when I met my ex-wife. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so I guess when I had had my first therapist. <laughs> and the S. Well, I I went through. Well, I don't think I want to talk about that today. May catch me in a better mood someday, and I might spill the beans. Last night we said to consider buying 2931 on the S and P. Never got there. We said to consider selling 2918. And did we get there? Uh, um, I think we did. Wait, Sam. Sam's yeah. got a question. Way Explain how your programs differ. What do you mean? Which programs, Sam? We've got comedy, drama. No, I'm teasing. Uh, this is the drama. Official mama. Okay. The swing low was twenty nine eighteen and a quarter. Ha! Huh, we were saved by the tick. How many times, guys, does that happen? You know, that happens. No, I better knock on some wood before I say it. That seems to happen more times than when we get nailed right on the, right to the tick. And I always count those as stopouts. If we get, if it gets hit to the tick, I, it's a stopout. Uh, I have uh, several clever retorts that I could use to justify it, but I won't. So now let's talk about these uh, Somebody's calling programs. from Memphis. Hang on a second. Sam, how much? Oh, the passport. The passport is our one stop, one shop, all access pass to everything E Mini and CFRN. That's how you say it. You want to write that down? Really, that's what it is, uh, Sam. It gives you access to everything we have and everything we will have. Everything we have and will have in the future. One roof, one shop, one set of indicators, one trade setup, multiple alerts, everything that a trader needs in one spot. And the beauty of the passport is as you travel about the world doing things that people do, windsurfing, if that's a thing, I don't know, sailing, uh, the passport travels with you. All countries, all time zones, when you're ready to trade, We've got alerts for you. Bang. You don't have to sit and wait, you know, and grind it out. Except on weeks like this, you just, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, straight up, take the week off. I could have told you that Sunday night, but I was hoping I was wrong. I wasn't. Uh, and I'm hoping this thing's going to bust loose at 2 o'clock, which is in 55 minutes. Did John make it in? Not yet. Okay. Um... All right, let's take a look at the Dow. Dow. Yeah, I sent this out la uh, last night, Michael. You might. This backs up what we were just saying about the. About the last BBC. night, yeah. That when when this crossed over, I just and I saw these little small candles on the north side of the BBC. I'm like, yeah, that that ain't, that's not going anywhere. Um, and so this turns into this. That was that first, I was questioning, is that the head fake? And then it down, and then it actually reached down to 26,515, which is a zone, I'm guessing from last week. Yes, that was last week's, or it's right on the chart, last week's highest weekly trading zone on the Dow. So it came down, touched that here, here, Here's a double bottom, okay, on the Dow. Possibly, if this Fed announcement uh, takes the the pressure off, and well, that's and that's what we're doing all week. We're building pressure here. Coiling is, uh, <clears throat> it's been called. We call it consolidation. Amounts to the same thing. We just are waiting. That's. That's all it. That's all there is to it. Now, Sam, let me give you more specific uh, details. Just ask me. Uh, we're talking, uh, you know, the charts, indicators. Uh, the charts aren't. They're not on premise yet, but they're in the works. But it includes indicators, concerts, trade alerts, uh, the logic two four seven, 
live training room every day, everything that a partner who was in the mentoring program would receive, uh, workshops on Thursday, unlimited one-on-one -on -one mentoring. What have I missed, Michael? Access to the uh, video library in the members meetings. area where there's over 400 hours of training videos. And no, you don't need to watch them all. In fact, it's well. They're there. They're, they're they archive history because every Thursday night we not only talk about the markets, we talk about our lives and you know what's going on. And there's different questions, so no doubt it will find its way into the Smithsonian at some point. Uh, it's already on archive.org, I think. No, it's not. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so the Dow. Yes. All right, last night on the Dow, let me get rid of this. And then if Sean doesn't make it, guys, but, you know, he doesn't make it, but he said, I'm, I'm coming on right now. So maybe he's having some kind of uh, issue with getting logged in. Yeah, because he's All right, not So there yet. consider being long at 26,560. All right, this thing went out, I got it out early last night, 615 Eastern. So that's going to be eight, the 1800 candle right there. All right. And so it said consider buying 26560. Well, that wasn't too bad, all things considered. Cut that right there. 26560. All right. From 60, we made it up to 74. Okay. I guess it is that bad. No. The high was 580. Okay, so we went from 560 to, well, it's 20 points. And then we did it again. So there was 20 and 20. Important prices, important areas are almost always tested. Trigger and go 20 points. Back below the trigger, off we go again, another 20. Back below the trigger, off we go again, another 20. And then back below the trigger and off we go again. And this time we make it all the way up to 26,598. So basically that's 38 points. The Russell, I don't know what happened at the open this morning. I did uh, make a comment at the beginning of the show. The Russell 2000 is 2000 small cap companies. So I kind of look at that as the man in the street index. And when there is a major seismic shift coming, something real, <clears throat> you'll often see it show up, you know, at street level first before it makes it up to the higher levels in the ivory towers. So I don't know what this is telling us, but off the open this morning, uh, the nine the nine thirty candle, we dropped from seventeen sixteen down to seventeen oh nine. That's seven. That's three hundred fifty dollars per contract in that thirty-minute candle. Now, last night we had suggested on the Russell that if you got the opportunity, sell seventeen oh seven. That didn't bear a lot of fruit. It uh, got down to a low of seventeen oh five forty. And on the long side, we were looking to be buyers up at twenty three, and we never got there. Quiet market conditions. On crude, we wanted to buy 7305. We've been, we've wanted to buy 7305 all week. We think that's the trade of the week, but if price can't get there, I guess it isn't. Uh, or consider selling 7150. You know, today was today was crude inventory day, right? Yes, it was. And the number came in as expected. No, the number came in uh, with a build. And they're expecting a little so drop. We, we can't even get a decent move out of crude on inventory day when we mm -hmm. don't meet expectations. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? I think it was a frustrating morning. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's been a frustrating week, and I'm just trying to be, you know, cavalier and nonchalant because uh, there's no reason to stress over it. And I explained earlier when there's not alerts coming through the pipeline, it, it's because there's there's nothing there's nothing going on. 
you know, there have been days and past weeks uh, since we started the logic program that any time of the day, I just open the charts and just start pulling out setups, you know? And, and now, over the last couple of days, I have turned over every rock and I've found a few pearls, but they haven't been in the places that we normally find them. And so for the most part, uh, as far as number of alerts, they've been much lower this week, but that's purely due to market conditions. Um, hopefully this changes after the Fed, but seeing how crude was a non-reactor to the yeah. inventories. I was thinking the markets were going to start moving after the crude came out, but... Okay, it didn't. Uh, I'm on the... With the NQ now. NQ, where did it go? Considering long 7608. Okay. Now that's more like it. Does your phone make that noise? No, my phone does not make that noise. Oh, that's, you don't get that when you do telegram? When you get a telegram? Mm -mm. I get a buzz. Because goes bzz, bzz. Oh, there was a question last night. I should address that right now while I think about it. <clears throat> Someone had asked what the uh, what what that meant, and so let me roll back to the most recent. Well, I, I, did I put them out in here? I guess I did. They're probably here. Okay. The question was, what are the initials? Because I always do a recap every week, end of the week. TA is total number of alerts issued for the day, week, month, etc. NT, no trigger. Price did not reach the entry price in the alert. And then I go into detail here. I won't right now. Well, yeah, I should. Some alerts are not expected to trigger. There are special situations whereby 90% of all traders, retail and professional, expect a certain outcome. When everyone is fishing off the same side of the boat, we intentionally drop our line off the other side. Should we catch even a goldfish, everyone will stampede over to our side of the boat but in order to do so, they must exit their current opposing position, which pushes us to the trigger. And as they place new orders chasing the latest micro trend, goldfish, we benefit as their new orders often push us to our targets and beyond. And sometimes it just means no trigger. FT, final target reached. Alerts can have multiple targets or just one. PT is partial target. Price reached minimum first target on multiple target alerts. If the alert has only one target, price reached 60% of the time, 60% or better on that particular alert. SO stopped out. Okay. And I do go into some detail there that if you want to just go to, uh, just go to the Telegram channel. This is in a public channel, so you can read all of this. PA is profit available. The alert took you to the full target or partial target, but there was profit available. And PF is probability factor. Others would call this a profit factor, which I personally view as a PT, parlor trick. Give me a set of data, any data, I can take that data, massage it, stratify it, reclassify it, and create a PDF report pretty damn fast. If you want people to stand and cheer, they will. Want them to kneel and weep, so be it. I've got pie charts as well as pie charts. I have Excel spreadsheets, interactive HTML5 widgets. I can even turn the original data into a ticker tape parade. I can, but I won't. Now, everyone hear this, please. Data begs to be manipulated and people long to be deceived. They get misty and choked up over ad copy like, never get stopped out again, or double your money back guarantee. It allows them to at least dream a little of the life they know they'll never have. Why won't they have it? Because they flock to the websites that offer money for nothing and your chicks for free. 
They sneer at us depressing realists until they're broke and come rap tap tapping at our cellar door. Now I got to hear three, yard, three hours of how they were wronged or broke, the mortgages due, and us being Christian men should train them for free just to, you know, make up for the heinous acts of the 89% crowd. So yeah, I reeled pretty hard on this. Uh, I thought my soapbox was going to give way, but, but it held. It held. Uh, everyone should go read this. It's in the public recap original beta out on the Telegram. Man, that's a good looking passport. Good looking passport. All right. John, welcome John. to the show. I opened this mic up. Welcome. How do? John. Greetings. John. Salutations. All right. I'll just keep going. Hey, John, your mic's open, brother. So, uh, back here on the NQ, we had said to consider buying 7608. And from 7608, we made it up to 28. So that's $400 per contract available right there. Important prices, important areas are almost always tested. So price gets back below the trigger. Off we go again. This time we make it up to 76.42. So that's uh, a little over $600 per contract available. Gold, consider being short. 11.95 which didn't happen we also wanted to be long if the market could pull itself up by its bootstraps over 12.09 and it couldn't it could not here's another one where we we missed getting triggered in by one tick gold has 10 ticks right here it was by 12.08 and we got right up to 12.790 that happens a lot so whatever that's worth I don't know Hey, how do I make this little thing over on the right go away? Any idea? No. Oops. Which, which little thing? This over here. Hang on. I don't even remember. Uh, I know what it bat. is. I know there's... I was playing... I was trying to do something. Anyway. Soybeans. Um, the sideways fruit. Yeah, I, I didn't know you could put that on a chart. I know you could put it on a dom, but I didn't know you could put it on a chart. Well, by jingos, I got it. You sure do. I don't know how I did it. Okay, on soybeans, we wanted to get long 851. And that happens. Right. Right here, 851. And then we got some back and forth. We finally got a swing high up at 5350, 54. So there was a couple points to be taken out on the long side. After this huge move, everyone should take this in. You know, when you get this type of a parabolic move in a market, especially one that's been rolling sideways for a while, a quiet day, a day of consolidation. And the ES, another little head fake to the downside. Nothing. But now that's that's a four hour chart but when again when we pull it out to the daily we don't have we have nothing uh, to make to lead us to believe that the bull market is over yet in fact we potentially have a bullish cross here which you know if it continues in the direction it's headed uh, will be perfect bullish divergence with the blue up top and the green down below and this thing our highest I our highest zone for this week, if you didn't catch it earlier, 2975 slash 2976. So right up in here. Okay. All right. Let me call him back and see what he wants to do. Uh okay. Because his mic is open. He's out there with an open mic. <laughs>
his headset is messed up so he's getting a he's got it he got a he grabbed his extra one and he's putting it on and plugging in as we speak so right after we talk to John guys we've already covered the different markets we'll go to the good word for the day after we speak to John that'll wrap us for today now tomorrow night is partners workshop and if you've been on the trial uh, get in touch with Michael he'll be sending you an email if he hasn't already which tells you, you know, what it takes to become a partner. If you're interested in becoming a passport member, um, there is, that's an, a, a lower initial upfront cost, and it provides you with more. So uh, he'll be happy to explain that to you or send you an email that contains it. And Sam, uh, did you did you have a question? Uh, yeah. Okay. So Michael's going to get a hold of you. Just. Uh, Give, give Michael a call, Sam, Sam. at 949-423-6464. Um, there's a histogram, Dwayne, in the, if you click on the little double arrows up there at the right, uh -huh. there's a histogram in there that you need to turn on or shut off, I think. That's what you're looking at. What chart was it on? There it is. Oh. Histogram on top double arrows up or there. over here? Over here? Over here. Yeah. See it right there? Histogram. No. Nope. It's down oh, at the bottom. It. Yeah. So how did I turn it on? Where does it say? Something should say on show numbers. On. Shut that you, off. You, you think that's that it? I don't know. I'm guessing. Uh -huh. Keep guessing. Nope. <laughs> yeah, keep guessing. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, give me a call, Sam. Number alignment opposite everything's off 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 hmm. yeah, I wonder if it's even off. responding I might have to just close that chart and bring up a new one <laughs> yeah it's responding uh, I, I don't My, mine says opposite too doesn't yeah. everything says off, off, off. Well, show number says on. Show number but. says on. Yeah, well, I just turned mine off. Oh. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. No, I, uh, I'll figure it out later. Okay. John, is that new headset working for you? Um, let me uh, mute him and then unmute him. Now, Sam, I, I didn't mean that I won't talk to you. I'm more than happy to, to speak with you. If you want to do a mentoring session, we could do that too. Uh, but I think you should talk to Michael. But then after you talk to Michael, if you want to talk with me, uh, I'll be more than happy to sit with you. In fact, I've got one mentoring session this afternoon. I haven't looked at who it is. It might be you. Well, that'd be something. Uh, still checking. It is... Uh, do we know him? Sam? No. James. My afternoon appointment. Oh. My afternoon delight. I don't know. I don't know which James it is. I'm trading. Well, some people say he's a maniac. I, I don't know. Yeah, maniac. he's a partner. Maniac. Maniac. Bueno. turns out <clears throat> sometimes you just have to reboot and because he has like 48 monitors and all these different computers I don't know what he does with them all but <clears throat> he's got them and uh, he'll be joining us tomorrow okay. and James I'll be meeting with you this afternoon and Sam when you speak to Michael if you want to book a mentoring session uh, you can book one on the website or if you just want to get with me this afternoon I'm going to be tied up from 4.45 to 5.30 Eastern, so I could meet with you before or after. Just let Michael know, and then he'll text me, and and we'll uh, we'll take care of it. Okay. Get it done. Get her done. All right, moving on to our good word for the day. If you missed the good word for the day yesterday, you might want to just listen to it, only because 
I think it spoke to a lot of us about our own lives. And it does every day because it's God's word and that's how it was planned. So today let's talk about living victoriously. Does God really want? Now that's a big Joel uh, Osteen theme, you know, uh, living your best life now, living victoriously. And of course the, the world's argument to the church on that is, yeah, okay, uh, yeah, God wants you to live victoriously. So all the missionaries that you sent over to wherever they got their heads chopped, yeah, explain that. And so sometimes if we are not careful, the world will catch us off guard. They will challenge what we say we believe. And when they ask us why we believe that, we shrug our shoulders and go, I don't know. Some preacher holding a rattlesnake said it when I was a little kid. So I just stuck with it. Don't, don't live that life. And don't live the life where you go to church every Sunday because your preacher, your pastor, your whatever, he's a man of action. And every Sunday from the pulpit, he tells some incredible tale of what happened to him just this week. He didn't even have to leave town. He had this incredible encounter with God and another human being or some special situation or whatever. And it's just, it's miraculous. And we live our life vicariously through the man of God. And that's not, I don't believe what God intended. I believe just as he has a relationship with that pastor that you admire so much, he wants that same relationship with you. He wants you to have those same kinds of God stories to tell. He wants you to be God smacked from time to time. So we got to learn how to live victoriously. Now in 1 John 5, 4, it's, we're taught that we achieve this victory through our faith. We're going to stop there for a minute. All right, if we're going to live victoriously, we're going to get there through our faith. But what is faith? Well, you know what I think. Faith is not what you believe. It's what you do with what you believe because faith without works is dead. Yeah, I know that can be preached both ways, but why don't we preach it as the truth? The Bible says that every child of God defeats this evil world and we achieve the victory through our faith. Now, again, we're achieving victory, not through what we believe, but what we do with what we believe. To live victoriously, you must do these three things. See, you gotta do something. I told you yesterday, Christianity, just like trading, is not a spectator sport. You gotta participate. Number one, restrict the enemy from moving into your life. When the enemy comes knocking at your door, and he will, don't invite him in for tea. Don't, you don't, have, don't hold a discussion with him. Don't, don't argue about the things of God. Just tell him to get lost, slam the door. Get more locks, get one of the little chain things. You know, just don't entertain him. Jesus said in Matthew 18, I promise you that God in heaven will allow whatever you allow on earth, but he will not allow anything you don't allow. I promise that when any two of you on earth agree about something that you are praying for, my Father in heaven will do it for you. Whenever two or three of you come together in my name, I am there with you. Now, the enemy doesn't want you to know that you have God-given power to restrict his movements in your life. But according to the Bible, you do. And what's that old saying? Use it or lose it, right? So, you, I mean, this is one book. You got to buy the whole thing or nothing at all. And it is the most purchased book in the world. The most purchased and least read book in the world. Number two, dare to believe and reach for what God has promised you, Paul says. In 2 Corinthians 9, 6, we've all heard it. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. A seed is anything you plant for a desired result. And a harvest is anything you decide to receive back from God. And both require an act of faith. 
Not only is God your source of supply, he's unlimited, impartial, and generous. Now, when we're doing recaps, you always hear me saying, well, that was, that was worth, the market made, you know, $420 per contract available. Now, that doesn't mean you earned $420 or that you took $420 out of the market or any such thing, it means that if you entered at the entry point, the market then went on to make $420 available. What you take out of it is determined by where your stop loss is, was, your hard target. See, you make that decision. The market makes it available, but you decide how much of what the market makes available are you going to take. It's your option. You can do it. Now, a seed is anything you plant for a desired result. And a harvest is anything you decide to receive back from God. So when, the, when God makes something available, man, grab hold of it with both arms. Just like when the market makes something available. Mark Douglas teaches in his book, Trading in the Zone. Hey, you know, don't forget to pay yourself, pay yourself, pay yourself, pay yourself. If you haven't read it, get a hold of me. I'll get you a copy of the book, a legal copy, so that his widow gets her royalties. <clears throat> One more time, dare to believe and reach for what God has promised you. Paul said, whoever sows generously will reap generously. And number three, wake up the dreamer within you. The Bible says, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Now, that was a far-reaching Old Testament uh, verse that I just read you, uh, Joel 2, 28 through 29. Because women did not have a high place in society back then. He says, I will pour out my spirit in those days on my servants, both men and women. That rattled a few cages, I'm sure. But here we are. Now we have to deal with people like Cosby and Kavanaugh. Sorry, ladies. Uh, I, I, I felt a little sad for Bill yesterday, but if he did this stuff, man, I don't know. It's, it's hard. This Kavanaugh thing, I don't even know what to think about that. But ladies... You're no longer a second-class citizen. In fact, some of the largest and most successful companies in the world, not Amazon, uh, are run by women. That lady who invented the Spanx, she's a billionaire. I saw her on the Shark Tank. Yep. All right. Your season of life and your gender are not a problem for God. Because remember, he orchestrated all that. Ask him to rekindle your faith and refocus your vision. If God put it in your heart, he knows where to start. And if he sends you on a mission, it will not be without provision. So, get ready. God's going to do something powerful in your life as soon as you're ready for him to do something powerful in your life. And don't wait for him to move first. You, you just get moving. You get moving, and you'll find him. He's waiting, and his arms are open wide. Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Uh, one more thing before everybody goes, just a reminder, FOMC is coming out at 2, and the statement is coming out at 2.30. The press conference is at 2.30. You guys don't want to be in the market. Okay? Get flat. Get flat. All right. See you at the bell. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe.
any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts, and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decisions.